Hi, I'm Ellie and I work for the Child Poverty Action Group. I'm going to talk to you about effective ways that schools can talk to their families about costs and money. Now, more than ever, schools want to do practical things to help families who are struggling with rising prices and reduced incomes. But talking about money can be difficult. If you've just gone without something so that your kids don't have to, it might be the last thing that you want to think about. We know that there can be lots of support out there for families who are struggling with the cost of the school day and with making ends meet more generally. However, lots of people are unaware of the support and don't take up the things that they're entitled to. We hope that using some of the steps that I'm going to outline in this presentation will give you more confidence to start having those compassionate conversations with your families and connecting people with the support that they're entitled to. We know that financial worries can cause stress for parents and carers and affect how children and young people feel about school, making them unhappy, discouraged and unable to get fully involved in learning. Meeting rising costs can mean cutting corners elsewhere in the family budget. And when costs can't be met, children and young people can miss out on opportunities and feel different if they're unable to have and do the same things as their friends. In Wales, education is supposed to be free, but a lot of things at school are not. This short e-learning will help people working in schools understand effective and non-stigmatising ways to bring up the subject of costs and money with families who are facing hard times. I'll also show you some simple steps to help connect your families with services that can help them to maximise their incomes and develop greater financial resilience. So why is this support so needed? We're all well aware of the cost of living crisis. Prices are going up much faster than people's incomes are. Some of us will have savings that we can dip into in order to bridge the difference between the money coming in and the money going out. But at least one in five families in Wales have no savings at all to fall back on. And many are living on less money than they need to get by. Research by the Bevan Foundation in the winter of 2021 found that around one in five families with children said they were already having to cut back on items for children, including books, toys, nappies and clothing. And the same research found half of single parents were going out without enough food for themselves so that their children could eat. And since then, prices have started to rise at the fastest rate in 40 years people's incomes aren't keeping up. Now we know that just under a third of children in Wales are growing up below the poverty line. That's around nine children in a class of 30. Poverty affects every aspect of family life. Having less money than you need to meet your basic requirements is very stressful. Parents and carers tell us that they feel worried all the time they find it harder to think ahead and plan and often experience negative impacts on the mental health and well-being of their entire household. For someone on the breadline, even small requests for money can be very difficult to manage. However, there are things that we all can do to change this situation. So this resource is about making sure that everyone finds a way to talk about costs and money. This will help to ensure that families on low income can access support and feel part of their school community. And children are really able to engage with everything the school day offers. I'll be sharing some practical examples for schools to use from the people who really understand how to talk to parents and carers about costs and money, the parents and carers themselves. There are five key things to know about talking to families about costs and money at school. The first step to doing this well is to be poverty aware. 
even small costs can be really significant for families who are getting by on a low income, which is why poverty awareness and understanding is so important. Awareness that every penny and pound counts to some families ensures that staff are mindful of costs across the whole of the school day and they take affordability into account when planning, learning and events. Understanding the challenges facing families on a low income supports greater empathy and engagement and ultimately will lead to a better response. It's important to recognise that people in poverty are not a static group in the population. Different families move into and out of poverty all the time. It just takes an unfortunate life event, like an unexpected illness, losing a job, or anything that triggers a rise in costs or a drop in income. And a family that was previously managing can be pulled below the poverty line. It's also important to recognise that poverty is very stigmatised and many families will not want others to know that they're experiencing hard times. Some families have also had negative experiences and they've reached out for help in the past. Understanding why it is hard for many parents and carers to let the school know that they are having money worries is the first step towards creating a trusting environment that allows families to approach you for support. Of course, many school staff already have an understanding of poverty and its impact on children and families, whether through professional learning, their own lived experience, or simply encountering this in their own classrooms. However, the nature, depth and extent of poverty is changing all the time. Even for staff who have had some understanding, it's still a good idea to continue to build on this work and update everyone's knowledge from time to time. The second step concerns leadership and visibility. Strong and visible leadership on equity and on tackling the cost of the school day is crucial. Parents say it makes a real difference when they know everyone at school is on the same page about why this is important for lower income families and the school community as a whole. Parents appreciate an open and proactive approach that's led from the top of the school. Families won't be queuing up to disclose their financial circumstances to their schools, but a proactive approach will signal that these conversations are possible and welcomed. A simple matter of fact style and communication to parents and carers, which acknowledges that any family could fall into financial hardship at any time. This needs to be matched with discretion, confidentiality, kindness and non-judgment when families do come forward. It's important to understand how difficult families might find discussions about costs and money. But when schools visibly demonstrate how they're tackling costs and are talking openly about them, it helps to overcome feelings of shame and encourage families to raise cost concerns. Step three is to make no assumptions and to let everybody know. Don't assume families are okay financially. Instead, show everyone that you are aware of hidden poverty and explain the support that's out there so nobody gets missed. It's really easy to make assumptions about family incomes, but you can't tell who's in poverty just by looking at them. Maybe your school is in a well-off area and uh, there are a few um, people living in areas of high deprivation. Perhaps there aren't many children and young people who are eligible for free school meals in your school. Maybe people don't complain about costs or you haven't heard them complaining and people generally seem to manage them. The parents tell us it doesn't matter where their schools are or how affluent the community appears. It doesn't mean there aren't families who are really struggling financially within these schools. And we know that child poverty exists everywhere in Wales. There isn't a single local authority where fewer than one in five children is growing up below the poverty line. And Child Poverty Action Group analysis has shown that under the current means test, 42% of children in poverty in Wales aren't currently eligible for free school meals. This is usually because their parents and carers are doing low paid jobs, which 
take them over the eligibility threshold for free school meals, but aren't paid well enough to escape poverty. The parents and carers say schools should share financial information with all families, not just those who they think might need it. This universal promotion means parents don't have to ask for help or signposting. Communicating universally helps to ensure information reaches the right people, even if you don't always know who that is. And visible and open communication opens the door to conversations and encourages any parents to come forward if they need to. Step four involves tackling the cost of your school day. When schools aren't mindful of financial pressures, parents on lower incomes can feel frustrated and unseen, or that schools don't understand how challenging life can be for them. They may have to cut corners on other essentials to meet school related costs, but it doesn't have to be like this. Taking a cost of the school day approach is all about understanding financial barriers, reducing costs and boosting incomes. By visibly taking action on the cost of your school day, it means children and young people will be included and able to take part in everything that the school day offers. And it means fewer financial worries for their parents. Step five means making space for conversations. Poverty aware approaches, which reduce costs, and maximize incomes, make it less likely that parents will have to raise concerns. But when parents do need to get in touch, knowing what support is available, knowing who to contact and feeling confident that they'll receive an understanding response are all things that will help. When conversations about costs and money happen, parents say that the following points are important to bear in mind. Remember how difficult this can be for families. Some parents told us about the guilt, shame, embarrassment, judgment and fear stops them from talking to family, talking to schools about costs and money. So being understanding, having an approachable nature and making it easy helps to remove embarrassment and makes parents feel able to talk. It's important to make clear to parents that they will be met with an understanding response. No matter how good you know your support will be, parents don't know until you tell them and may still feel judgment or negative impact for their children. When it comes to general information about financial support, universal, open and visible approaches are key to ensuring that nobody misses out. However, when it comes to having conversations about costs and money, parents tell us they like to know that these conversations will be discreet and in confidence. Parents appreciate having these conversations on a one-to-one -one basis and in private. It's helpful to offer different ways for these conversations to take place, for example, face-to-face, -face, phone, online, or by email. And parents told us that it's useful to know who they will be speaking to. The named person to contact with cost concerns or questions about financial support may vary from school to school. It could be a family engagement officer, a cost of the school day lead, or someone in the school leadership, head teacher even. What is important is the families aware of their name, how they can get help, how to contact them, and the type of response they're likely to get. All of this increases parents' confidence in talking about costs and money. We've heard about the importance of poverty-aware approaches, which are bold and visible, about the need for regular and repeated universal communication on costs and financial support, about action on reducing costs, and the need for approaches that are understanding and discreet. These are the things which help parents to feel more confident and comfortable raising concerns about costs. These are the things that mean the right information and support will reach families when they need it. And ultimately, these are the things which will make life 
easier for families and make sure that all children and young people can take part and feel included at school. If you create a welcoming and compassionate space for families to step forward and begin that conversation about accessing support, you'll then be able to move on to the resources that I've linked to here, which will take people to specialist information about maximizing incomes or about benefits or about food aid and so on. But it's important to remember taking action on one or two points might help but what really makes the difference is putting these steps together to create a whole school approach to talking about costs and money which takes into account how difficult this can be for parents and how transformative it can be when you create a safe and friendly space for people to come to you and ask for help.